In this session, we are going to talk about the new feature introduced in Postman called Flows. Now, what is a Postman Flow? It's a visual tool for creating API workflows. We can use flows to chain different requests, handle data, and also create real world workflows in a Postman workspace. Now, before we jump into how the flows work and how we can create different Postman flows, let's try and look at the flows interface. Now, this interface is a new feature added in the recent versions of Postman. As earlier, I am currently using Postman version 10.6. Do try to use a recent version of Postman if you're not able to see this flows uh, in the left hand side menu, right? So once you see the flows, just click on flows and here you will be able to create your first Postman flow. We can uh, create a new flow using different ways. So we can click on this plus sign to create a new flow. We can also create our first flow using this link. Okay, so when um, I click on this, uh, it creates a new flow. I can give it a name and then it also creates a block, a default block, which is the start block in this particular canvas, right? So this is the interface of the Postman flow. Now this Postman flow interface has got three main parts. One is the toolbar, which is at the bottom. Then on the right hand side, there is the right sidebar. And then we have the console where we can see all the different logs uh, when we run a particular flow. So let's try and understand each of the sections in this interface in more details. So coming to the toolbar, so we have got these buttons uh, through which we can do a undo, a redo. So we can either zoom out or we can zoom in so that we can look at our flows more clearly. We can also do a fit view, which will fit this particular flow or blocks into this particular screen. Uh, then uh, we can also do or we can start running the flow, right? So currently there are no blocks, so hence you cannot see this running. But later on, I will show you uh, when you start running the flow, it will show you how the flow goes um, from each block to another block, okay? Uh, then um, we can add different blocks using this add a block, okay? So if I do a block here, it will give me a lots of different options here. And there are different blocks which you can add, okay? So for example, if I do a log, okay? And then I can add it here. So th that's one way of doing it. Um, I can also uh, duplicate this. Um, I can change the color and I can do a delete. Okay, so I can remove the block as well. The other way of doing it is I can also do a right click here and then I can see all the different options again and I can select it from there, okay? Uh, again, I can delete it. So let's try to zoom out a bit, okay? To see it more clearly. And the other way, the third way to add a block is uh, just to take this direction or arrow, okay? From one block to another block. So this will connect the two blocks. And here again, I will have all the options. I can type in uh, whatever block I want to add in the search, or I can search it uh, by my own. So once I do this, uh, this will be connected, okay? Um, we can also add text uh, through this toolbar. So when you click on this, and um, it will provide you uh, with a text section where you can type in what kind of flow it is, okay? So I can say sample and it will put that sample uh, text on top of my flow or blocks. So these are all the tools which are available in the toolbar, uh, which you can use to design or to edit your flow, okay? Now coming to the sidebar, uh, here uh, we have got uh, different options. The first one is runs. So if you have, um, 
run this flow for a couple of times, then it will show uh, any execution errors here, um, webhook events, and uh, then you have an option for running on the cloud, okay? Uh, uh, here you will see to, if I click on a block uh, and it will show me the configuration, okay? And the ports, so uh, you can use this to uh, simulate incoming webhook data. Okay, so these are some additional configuration which you can do. Then forks, uh, we can fork a particular flow from here. Okay, and then the flow details. So it has got a ID which you can copy. Uh, you can enter a summary for your flow and you can also save a snapshot uh, which will uh, save a snapshot um, as a representation of your flow that you can send uh, to their support team if you need any help or report a bug in close, okay? So these are some of the tools uh, available in the sidebar. And finally, we have the console, okay? So in the console, you will get all the logs, um, whatever you are running in your flows, all the logs, errors, everything would be displayed here, okay? And you can go through the results also of your flow in this console. You can always go ahead and clear it, okay? And you can also filter out based on what you want to see. Uh, you can only see log, info, warning, or error. Now let's try and see how we can create a new flow in Postman. So for this, let's create a new collection and we'll add a new request through which we'll try to create a new flow, okay? So uh, let's go to collections and then let's click on new. And here uh, I'm going to create a new collection. So that has created a new collection for me and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name called Pokemon API because we'll be using the Pokemon API for this particular collection. Okay, and here uh, let's add a new request. So, here uh, we need to give it a name. So we will say uh, get Pokemon, okay? And here we need to give it a URL. Uh, so the request type would be get, and we need to give it a URL. So let's try and enter this URL here. So it's pokapi.co slash API slash okay so this is the request URL this will also be available in the description if you want to try and find it okay so this will uh, return us a 200 results from the Pokemon API list, okay? So we'll have a list of 200 Pokemon names um, and some other details, okay? Um, let's try and send this so that um, we can see if we are able to see any results or not. So as you can see, it has returned us a result of different Pokemons, uh, which contains a name and a URL. Now, um, uh, what we need to do is we need to save this response and we have to select save as example, okay? So let's save it as an example and here it will be saved so that we can use it later for our postman flows. The last thing which we have to do is we have to replace this uh, URL with a variable, okay? So I'm going to replace it with a variable called URL. And this is currently showing it as a unresolved variable because we haven't added it either to collection, globals, or anywhere. Okay, so let's add this new uh, variable. And uh, we'll put a value here, the URL, the actual URL, and we'll select um, a scope here okay so um, I will say the collection Pokemon API right 
so this will be set for this particular collection so we have the collection and the get request now let's go back to flows and let's try and save everything what we have created and then let me delete this flow so that i can create a new flow here okay so let's create a new flow and it will automatically generate the start block which is the beginning of your flow okay and now uh, we need to create a flow which can send that particular request and get us the result and we'll do some additional things uh, in this particular workflow okay so let's begin uh, by creating our first block and here uh, i'm going to search for send request okay so that's we want to send a request from a particular collection so we are going to select this block send request and here you can see it is a get a request type so here we need to select a particular send request okay so here are all the collections which are listed when you click on this particular box and then i need to select pokemon api and inside this get pokemon okay so that's my send request as you can see there is a success there is a failure so from where you can again continue your blocks uh, you can add a environment variable um, and then there are variables which are automatically populated here we have got a url variable here as you can see right so um, here uh, what we need to do we need to create another block so right click and make it string okay and then this particular string here i need to enter the url okay and we are going to feed it into this particular url variable okay so actually i could have left uh, the url variable as it is without putting in the value but uh, let let's leave it for now okay so we'll be feeding a uh, a string value which is the url into this particular url variable so that's that's our workflow uh, that's our initial workflow at least okay now uh, we want to log the output to the console okay so we will continue from the success block here and we will search for a block called select so it selects the data from the input using a path okay so here we need to select a path these are uh, the response results which are returned from uh, the send request when it is a success and it will be displayed here so you can select your own path okay so i need to go into the body and i want to get the results list so that's my select path okay and it will return me all the results from the body of this particular request or response okay so from here uh, what i want to do i want to log the results into my console okay so i will use the log block and this actually is a complete flow okay so it's a very simple workflow until now we'll add some more things here but let's go ahead and run this particular flow uh, as it is okay so uh, let's go to our toolbar on the bottom and we'll start running the flow and you can see there are blocks moving around okay you can also see um, the results here uh, in each step okay so it will show you all the results here uh, in each step so we can also go to our console and we will we can see the results here okay so there is a get request and then uh, it has returned us a list of 200 uh, pokemons with the name and the url so that's your first flow and it ran successfully we have got a limited number of blocks through which we are getting this workflow to work right so let's add some more blocks some more logic into this workflow so that uh, we can see some more results okay so currently we are only able to see the initial 200 results uh, which is returned from this response but what if i want to see more results okay the next set of results so what we can do uh, we can again 
uh, take a block from this success okay and here again I will uh, go to select block and here again I will enter a path okay so this time around um, I will select body and then I will select next not the results okay so this will re return me um, the next set of results okay now uh, what we need to do is we need to add another block here called evaluate okay so this transforms and you can also query data using a particular query language which is called fql okay um, and then here um, i can enter a fql query uh, i have to enter a variable so the key would be um, has underscore next okay and then here in the query i will say has underscore next uh, not equals to null okay so now we have the condition has next not equals to null so if has next is null then uh, you can know that the flow has reached its last set of results okay so the next step is to create an if block and connect its true or false port to the evaluate blocks out okay so let's drag uh, from out and here we are going to create a new if block so we'll search for if and then click on it so that will create an if block and it will feed into this true and false right but we need some data so which can evaluate this true and false okay so what we are going to do next is connect this body next select blocks and this right port to the if blocks data port okay so we are going to drag this port here till the data port and that will connect uh, the body next port to the if data block port okay so the select block will now send the url of the next set of pokemon results used in the next step okay now the next step is to connect the if blocks true port to the send request blocks url port which will pass the new url variable to the send request block okay so let's do that uh, let's drag the port from the if true block till the url send request block so that will feed the url uh, path for the next set of results okay now we also need to connect the if blocks true port to the send request blocks send port okay so that the workflow can continue running so let's connect that and that's our last connection okay so it will trigger the send event port of the block so that it can run again so our workflow is now complete as you can see uh, let's zoom out so that we can see it uh, see the workflow completely here right so we have got a start block uh, we are sending a request right uh, which has got a url variable so we are feeding the value here to the url variable and then uh, if the send request is a success it will return us a response so from that response body uh, we are getting the results and logging the results here now from the same success block uh, we are again uh, getting the next set of results from the response body right and then we are evaluating uh, in this block we are uh, trying to see whether uh, we have got any next results or not right so we are checking this here in this condition uh, if this condition is true then it will go from this out block to this if block and uh, uh, this body next port is also connected uh, or it is feeding the url uh, as data to this if block right so if that's true then it will again send that url back here into the send request uh, which will process that url and we also have the connection to the send port so that this workflow can again continue when uh, there is a next set of results when this uh, condition is not met then uh, this flow will end okay so that's that's our whole workflow so let's see it running now okay so click on run 
and you will see now all the blocks are moving from here till here and it will move until uh, this whole results are displayed on the log window okay so that's complete now as you can see it has stopped moving so we can go to the console and here you will see all the set of results displayed here right so what i can do i can uh, also clear the console so that it clears the previous results and i can see the current results only so let's run this again and you will see this workflow running it's a pretty unique ui where you can see the whole flow uh, how is it uh, running from each block how all the blocks are connected right so now it's completed uh, now let's see the console and you can see all the results here okay so um, one after another it is returning me a set of 200 results which will contain again all the pokemon uh, results right the name and url and when it reaches the last set of results which is 154 uh, after this this workflow will uh, cease to run because the condition has been satisfied so after this there are no values so has next value would be null okay so it will not uh, run the workflow again it will stop the workflow there itself so as you can see you can put all types of logic in this particular workflow um, you don't need to write any tests or you don't need to write your logic in javascript uh, in your uh, request and response but you can put everything in this workflow you can design your own workflow you can put the logic you can put if conditions whatever you want to do right in this workflow so that uh, you can put all your logic behind your api workflows right here so this is the new feature which is called the postman flows and you can create any number of flows right from your collections um, as a last step i can also name this flow so i will say the pokemon uh, api flow okay so that will save my pokemon api flow here i can also um, add text here okay so i can add text uh, for each of my blocks so this is for uh, sending a request right so similarly yeah you can add text so that it makes it more visually clear what is going on in each of these blocks so that's all about the postman flows we'll talk about some more things uh, related to postman flows in our next sessions